I want to start by telling you a story my mom told me about a friend from college. They were talking about, um, at one point she was talking about with her fellow friends about milk. Um, some of her friends were also studying to be teachers, they were talking about farms, it's just what they were learning at the time. And one of their friends made a comment that was kind of odd when they mentioned cow milk. They were like, what do you mean by cow milk? And they asked, you know, milk from cows. And he answered, milk comes from cows? And they, they were kind of scared by that. Well, yeah, it, it comes from cows. Where do you think milk comes from? He's like, it comes from, I thought they made it. Like in farms, they make milk. And they had to go and tell him, like, no, it comes from an animal. Most milks come from animals. And it, to this day, it still kind of shocks me because as someone who lived in the San Fernando Valley, you, you think somehow, some way, he would have been to a farm, he would have seen cows, and know why normally we keep cows, especially dairy cows, but he did not. And while this is a bit of an exaggerated story, it's very outrageous, um, it is true that a lot of people are very disconnected um, from the farming industry and agriculture. And so today I want to talk to you how this kind of lack of knowledge can really um, potentially hurt us when it comes to talking about environmental issues, when it comes to ethical issues of where or how um, the products we use are um, being made, and also from when we talk about social or political issues that we sometimes forget are involved in agriculture. Um, first thing I want to talk about is um, environmental issues, and I'm going to use California as an example. Um, in California, of course, we know that we have water issues, and um, when we talk about water issues, some people I've seen don't even mention the fact that um, agriculture, despite the fact that agriculture is one of the biggest topics when you're talking about water issues. Um, According to the Washington Post, um, California provides around two-thirds of the fruit and nuts in our nation. And it, it and the water that is used for those is about 80% of the California water. And so when you're talking about cutbacks and regulation, you need to know, well, where is this going? And is this being done to urban or farming? And if you don't know that, then you kind of don't really have a fully formed opinion on the topic. And to, when we talk about the actual processes involved with the land, a lot of times there is maybe confusion. For example, some people hear about irrigation, but they don't really understand how that might affect them. So irrigation is um, the way we artificially manipulate water in order to get it to our soils. So this can be done with tubes or gravity and there's many different ways, and some of them are more efficient than others. And people may not really be interested in learning these ways or really supporting it, even though this is being done with or using our natural system. So it will inadvertently affect us. For example, if it's not being done efficiently, water is wasted, or maybe um, debris gets into the water. So it's something that we should be looking into or be knowledgeable about. Another um, issue where knowledge about agriculture is really useful is when we talk about ethical issues, concerns that people have about agriculture. For example, um, me and my friend were once talking about um, Mark Zuckerberg, how he had this thing, this article where he talked about, like, I killed my own cow. And she was very, like, that's kind of creepy that he killed his own cow and he ate it, like a cow that he raised. And I just remember thinking, I'm like, well, what do, you, what do you think they do with cows when you eat hamburger? They, they kill them, you know? <laughs> I didn't understand kind of her <coughs> apprehension to that. And it's probably because, you know, I was not very big into agriculture, but I took one ag class. We saw a pig people raised. We saw it um, slaughtered and, of course, the biology of it, its organ system. And it was just sort of something I kind of like, yeah, that is how we get meat products. But for a lot of people, um, according to um, Silja Liegberg, um, there's a real disconnection from like the animals and the meat products we get from the animals. 
Um, and a lot of people, it, this leads to some people, maybe they wouldn't eat as much meat or they wouldn't over consume meat if they really were associating the animal with the meat itself. They would see what the weight of what that meat product is. And of course that, that depends on the sensitivity of people, but a lot of people, they don't even bother to learn about that. Another thing is about how because we're so unfamiliar with what's going on, there's not really a lot of trust in um, agriculture processing, but there's a lot of concern. So Charlie Arnott of the Center for Food Integrity says, reported that about 80% of people um, in the survey agreed that there was concerns for the environmental impact of agriculture and also how it affected things like climate change. But only around 30% were strongly agreed that farmers were taking good care of the earth. And then when it came to, um, when it came to um, mainly um, harvesting meat from animals, 55% agreed that they would have less problem eating animal products if they knew that it was done in a humane way, but only about 25% were certain that U.S. meat products came from humanely um, treated animals. And whether there is an issue or not, people aren't necessarily investigating, they just sort of hear about issues. They're not really familiar, they're not really seeking out and seeing. And so there's no real communication going on. And so that kind of harms us and doesn't really let us make fully educated guess when um, um, choices. The last issue um, is the fact that a lot of times agriculture is sort of interlocked with other social or political issues. For example, the National Farm Worker um, Ministry um, says that it is true that Historically, um, migrant workers and immigrants have been like the backbone of the labor in America. And despite that, um, a lot of people don't really, <coughs> despite that, a lot of people don't really think about it as much. They kind of separate the issue. We don't really talk about agriculture and immigration necessarily together unless it's brought up together. But like it's not really a separate issue. And it, especially things like when we talk about pesticides, we're not talking about how is it affecting the actual people. It's just kind of an issue in itself. And so it's kind of lost this social aspect of these are real people doing these things. And also when it comes to um, things like politics, um, Ted General Ways wrote a book where he followed a um, farm family in Nebraska and how they had to sort of um, adapt with different um, times as things like Trump um, has different political issues with other countries that this could and affect them in their day-to-day -day lives. And that historically things like corn or soybean, certain products that we sort of have made ourselves dependent on and made others um, demand from us that because of how um, interlocked or interdependent we become on each other, we can't really say that we're completely separate from other countries. That it, anything we do, even in politics, will affect um, the agriculture inside and outside of our country. So what are some of the solutions for this? Um, one I would say probably the easiest, at least when it comes to the younger generation, is promoting knowledge and um, involvement in schools. So City Lab talked about a case um, uh, in Illinois where despite Illinois being very surrounded by a lot of big agriculture big businesses, a lot of the city um, children were not really involved or did not were not aware of all these jobs that were in the agriculture business. So they set up different programs we set up different programs for them too. And it maybe they they found that maybe around one third of people were going into these, which may not seem a lot, but for people with no prior um, no prior um, background in agriculture, it is a good amount. 
and more importantly, whether or not they went into a career of agriculture, they had a they would have um, going into higher education or the workforce, they would have a better understanding of what goes on in the agriculture system. And for adults like us, I would say probably the easiest access is maybe educational programs. Like for example, when I was young, I liked to watch things like Dirty Jobs, which sometimes would have agricultural aspects of it. And it's not just like information, we're seeing certain things explained in a textbook, but seeing like names, places, faces put into these actions that are sometimes technical, like actually seeing it. Because I don't want to be like my mom's cousin and being surrounded by all these things that are affected by agriculture and are affecting agriculture and not know anything about it. I want to be involved in it. So Sam, what did you think? Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, you had a lot of information. I liked how you did start with the story instead of going in straight with your purpose statement. Uh, I, I did enjoy that. That was a nice little um, story. And you, so my, my only thing is that uh, you started um, with this, uh, I think your point was uh, just Better, or better, like knowing of the knowledge in agriculture, correct? Um, you you have a lot of information, and you you go about it uh, like expressing it in a topic by topic. But I think you can allude and transition into those better. Maybe have a little bit more information on each topic because you start with one topic. So you're talking about the milk story, and then after that, you jump straight into like a, a story about pesticides. And it's kind of a little bit confusing having to uh, jump from one to the other like super quickly and kind of like have to like uh, like think about it and kind of transition with that. Um, you do use a lot of uh, sources and citations, which I enjoyed. Uh, I think those uh, those were really really good and helpful. Um, and your solution, um, it was expressed. I thought that was all right. I did like the dirty jobs reference. <laughs> and you did express your uh, conclusion. So um, yeah, I just think that maybe uh, uh, alluding more information to, to your specific uh, topics of things that you transition into quickly would be a little bit more helpful because at times it felt like you would uh, kind of go into like a little bit of a ramble. Yeah. But other than that, I, I enjoyed it. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd agree with a lot of the things that Sam just said. I, I think the story at the beginning is pretty solid to explain how people are disconnected from uh, agriculture, you know, that we live in a world where people sometimes have no sense of uh, how interconnected we are to a variety of things. And that's the point that you're making you later on. That, yeah, know. well, it's... Yeah, I don't know what he thought they were making milk out of. That's a little bit weird. You know? like a chemical. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, we pumped the water out of the ground, and then we had the chemical to it and turned it into milk. Yeah. yeah it's magic. They, they, they grilled them on it. it was, they didn't believe it. it was, they had to accept it. It was just true. Um, but as you're talking about the lack of knowledge that people have of agriculture on a variety of things, I think you need to be a little bit more particular. So for instance, when you talk about agriculture and you talk about the amount of water that gets used in California and how much of it is used for nuts and fruits and those kinds of things, well, you ought to be pointing out that when we go through periods of drought, they, there's always a question about how is it that we are going to restrict use and that kind of thing and, and, and that people sometimes maybe resent the notion that they're going to have limitations placed on their utilization of water uh, the, the question is, is there a consequence because we haven't prepared uh, to ha store water to be able to utilize it more efficiently, that kind of thing. And it's largely because of our ignorance on these issues that those things become a problem. That it's, if it's not staring us in the face with a crisis, we tend to ignore it and, and don't realize how important those things are. So the more particular you can be about some of those issues, I think the uh, 
better off that you'd be. Uh, you you know you've got uh, two or three points. You know, like you mentioned at the end, the economic connection that's going on there. And you make some general reference to something that Trump has done, and I have no idea what it is you're referring to. No, 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 no. You, you can't. You don't get to add to the speech at this point. You, you know, what I'm saying is that's the kind of thing that you need to have. You need to say, you know, uh, people are affected by trade policies that involve our agricultural products, and we don't realize how big an impact that might have on. You know, uh, other industries in some way, or you know, you may not be a farmer that's directly affected by corn prices or those sorts of things. But here's how it affects everybody in some way, shape, or form. And when the president's policy does this, here's why it has these kinds of consequences. So all I'm saying is, all of the points I think that you have are good points, but they would make more sense and be more meaningful if you could give us particulars about how they have an impact on us. It's, it's a little generic right now. Your solution at the end is a little bit fuzzy. Well, we get into some food pro or some education program, uh, pay more attention to it. It's okay. Uh, I, I did like the suggestion about, you know, maybe a pay, you know, tuning into the world a little bit more instead of spending all of your time watching, you know, uh, Game of Thrones, you turn on dirty jobs once in a while, or you, uh, check and see some of these other things that you know, people live their lives doing this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that you have to, but I tell you, you see those ads for, uh, you don't have to be lonely, farmersonly.com, you know, and I just think, apparently there's a whole world out there of lonely farm people, you know, who, you know, are struggling to get by, and for a lot of people, maybe that's their only contact with the agricultural community is seeing an ad for lonely farmers, and they don't realize you know, long hours that people put in, how important it is to the economy, to the environment, to water issues, that kind of thing. I, I like the idea of doing that. How could we plug into that a little bit more? Uh, the education system, I think, is a good point. Maybe, maybe there's even an argument to be made that everybody should be required to do some of those kinds of things. You know, your mom's cousin, I, I mean, it's, it's so hard for me to imagine that a kid wouldn't have gone to through a, you know, they'd have seen the dairy farms in the film strips or the, uh, or the, the videos that they show in classes, much less actually having visited a place. And I don't know that they do much, uh, you know, field trips anymore. You know, that used to be a big thing when I was a kid. They always did the they field trip it. kind of thing. I was going to mention, they do in like the younger grades. Yeah. Like, well, like I said, yeah. he would have been in a younger grade at some point. Do you not remember going to the, and, and, and there's, a, there's one, by the way, there's an obvious solution that you could point to also. We have a county fair, yeah. and at the county fair, agriculture is the thing. You know, instead of just sitting on the uh, the midway and riding the uh, thrill ride and eating uh, something on a stick, maybe you should walk over and see the dairy cows that are in competition, or the pigs that have been raised, or the crops that have been brought in, or you know, and and see what's going on there. It doesn't require any extra effort on your part except that you walk from one section of the fair to the other and instead of throwing a couple extra balls at the clown maybe you, you know, walk through the exhibit and see hey here's how milk actually works you know that kind of thing so there are ways to demonstrate those kinds of stuff all right thank you